My name is Hugh H.D. Hunter, a young adult author, uh, activist, educator, and I'm here in Niskayuna, New York today, uh, doing a workshop and a keynote presentation for some ninth graders and meeting a lot of different educators here at the school. They wanted me to come and talk about building community and then to get in some like intensive writing practice for students, uh, you know, across the grades. So I've had a lot of fun doing workshops and practicing different uh, tactics for writing, building characters, building worlds, connecting with all different kinds of students. And so it's been awesome. I first learned of Mr. Hunter when I was invited into Mrs. Leah Werther's English classroom. And I had a chance to sit in when he was Skyping into their class. And it was an awesome day. I still remember it from last year. And he spoke with such heart about writing and about just asking questions about where the kids were at in their finding their own voice and being writers themselves. That when that class finished, I went up to Mrs. Werther and said, that was amazing. I hope we can have this writer back again. I believe he was in, um, I wanna say LA at that time. So it was probably around like four in the morning his time and 7.30 for us. And so, you know, there's this, like, there's this commitment here that, that I felt like, you know, he really wanted to reach students and like really prepared to, you know, talk to them. The history and the context behind writing, especially for me, um, is something that is not to be overlooked, right? I'm from Georgia. I did a little bit of genealogy back when I was in high school. And both of my parents' parents, as far back as we can take them, are from Georgia. So I don't know if anybody ever lived in any other place, right? I'm African-American, which means that at some point, my ancestors came over from Africa and were slaves in America. And as we know, uh, it was illegal for, for black people at that point in time to know how to read and write, to learn how to read and write. So the fact that I'm here today as a professional writer uh, to share time with you all <laughs> and to write for a living, um, it's really like bigger than I think anybody from those previous generations could have ever imagined that, that somebody that they're related to would be doing. I remember Mr. Hunter being just very charismatic and personal and making sure that he made a connection with all the students in my class and he was super open about like hearing all the questions and it was awesome to have someone so like easygoing um, but still so successful. He just seemed like a really genuine person and like he seemed like he loved what he was doing and like he has a passion for it. So I just like really liked that about him. And I really liked the fact that um, he wasn't doing the same thing in other like cities as us and like he just, everything was different. Like nothing was the same really. Let's just get into it. Is this, does this stuff need to exist? Ugh. A lot of how we teach students writing is high stakes. It's this, you're writing for a grade, writing for an assignment, and it can be difficult to cultivate a love of anything when there's always consequences attached to it. So primarily, you know, I wanna get here, I wanna hear from students, I wanna know what they care about, um, I want to know what they like to read. If they don't like to read, I want to know why. I just want to establish like a relationship with them because not only does that uh, help me in connecting with the reader, um, it, it just makes the, the connection more genuine when I'm here in person, right? It makes it feel like the time is being used in the most worthwhile way. If we want to be abstract for a second, every story that you've ever read is only a portion of a greater story, right? And we have to think about plot, versus story. So the plot is what you're actually reading, and what's happening, the events in real time of the book. But the story, the universe of the actual work is much, much bigger. Sometimes they refer to things that happened decades before or allude to decades after. And so taking yourself out of this construct of what a story is supposed to look like is like the first thing that helps me come up with plot ideas. In addition to you know making the art real, actually giving students a sense that you know, whatever their dreams are, their pursuits are, like there are people who look like them who are out here doing the very same things and have an invested stake in making sure that they can achieve those things as well. 
I'm not a teacher. I don't have to create lesson plans every day. And so when I get the opportunity to, to, to make a, an activity for a student to do, it's important to me and I wanna make it original and I wanna make it special. Everybody likes something that's custom built for them. And so students being able to participate in something that you know, they know no other students have, have been able to do before or that they won't get to do, uh, I think it ends up meaning a lot. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, I can just ensure that I leave them with a positive experience and that they'll be able to take something away and say, hey, I know that that guy really cared enough to try to make something special for us. You know, even if they don't remember the exercise or they don't read my book ever, they'll know that somebody came with the intention to, to craft something that was unique to them because they deserved it. This is great. No, that makes me happy, right? Like every time I come somewhere, it's not so I can show off for y'all. It's so that you can feel like you have a little bit something more or different than you had before I got here. To me, the best way to get the inspiration to create characters is to interact with people and all different types of people in all different scenarios. What time was, what time was he born? What weather was it that day? What do his parents do for a living? Where did he go to primary school, right? All of those things are important to the life of your character, just like they're important to your life. They make them who they are. For people who have doubts or wondering where to start, it's like put the biggest vision of your success that you can in your mind and just chase it. There'll be plenty of things along the way that you learn. There'll be people that you meet that help you. There'll be all types of things you have to overcome, but you can't ever really get to that pinnacle if you don't imagine it in your mind and just start to take the steps. You know, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, but dream big and just go for it. I hope that the video would inspire um, other professionals in the same sort of arena to consider what this might look like in their hometown, even if not with me, with another local artist. You know, how can we make this sort of education the standard and really bring the fun back into things like reading and writing?